Today on Marex Gear it's tripods, why do I need so many of them and why am I still buying new ones? Let's find out. One of my Polish viewers recently asked me about the tripods I use, so I thought this would be an interesting topic for those of you who are just getting started. Because chances are you'll need a proper set of sticks rather sooner than later. So here's my arsenal. Starting from the left, it's the Velbon Sherpa 600R and the oldest one here, then the Liebeck TH650DV, Manfrotto B3 Live, Manfrotto MVMX Pro 4 Monopod and an MVH500AH head and a Manfrotto MVT535AQ with whatever head, everything is linked below. Some of these tripods may not be available anymore, but I found some replacements and they are all linked down below. Along the way I had two other tripods as well. My first one was a media marked off-brand that's a uh, electronics chain here in Europe. Uh, it was something between the Velbon as far as the head was concerned and the Liebeck as far as the legs. You'll see what I mean when I get to them. I also used to own a Benro Aero 2 which at the time was one of the very few tripods with a video head, if not the only one, which could sort of kind of fit in a carry-on suitcase. Before we go any further, I would like to point out that one can achieve great effects with simple and inexpensive gear as long as one has a lot of time on their hands. I have some time constraints, so I learned I need gear which will allow me to do my work fast and without fail, hence some of the stuff I buy may be an overkill for many of you. All the tripods mentioned here were or still are in regular use when I'm shooting my shoestring budget car reviews. The first tripod looked something like what you can see on the screen right now, it cost about 30 euro and it served me well for quite some time. It was great with a compact camera which I used at the time. It was also easy to use with one hand because the head locked in one place with a twist of the handle. With a bit of training you could do relatively smooth panning shots. I had to retire this tripod only after I dropped it one time too many and the quick release plate lock broke. This is when I upgraded to the Velbon. It's relatively light and compact and you can spread its legs far apart to get those nice low down shots. The head is released and tightened with a twist of the handle. It's not ideal, especially when you want to get a panning shot of details and you have to adjust focus at the same time. The head level adjustment is limited as well. Also, the quick release plate is rather small, so with a larger camera, it's hard to get good balance. I got the Liebeck for a very good price from the radio station I used to work in. This was some six or seven years ago and there were early attempts to film broadcasts in the studio. A few years later it was only good for studio duty. The screws to lock the head in place got worn out. In some tripods the wing nuts are on a spring so you can pull them out and sort of adjust them over an obstacle but here you can't do that. Also, the Liebeck was out of its depth when I started using a slider. The slider was too heavy and the quick release plate got worn and it started moving, wobbling ever so slightly, so I had to use tape to make the edges thicker again. I also missed the low down shots. That said, it was definitely an improvement over the Velbon Sherpa. Meanwhile, I was looking for a smaller tripod that I could easily take with me to car launch events. These trips are usually very short, less than 48 hours. You fly in very often with a short uh, layover and uh, you have to do your work and then go back home. There is no time to explain to the airline staff that if someone loses your tripod, you may just as well not go at all. And this is how I found out about the Benro Aero 2. By the way, it cost me a broken camera and I had to shoot the BMW X3 launch event on a GoPro. It was a windy day, so in order to secure the tripod, I hung a camera bag on this special hook. By the way, when looking for a top-heavy tripod, make sure it has that hook. Anyway, one of the legs just collapsed like if the clamp wasn't at all tightened and the camera hit the rocks. Later, I checked all the legs and it turned out I could fold them without opening the clamps. After this, I got rid of the Benro and switched to an even more compact, but also a sturdier Manfrotto B3 Live. 
The Aero 2 fit in my suitcase diagonally, but the B3 fits along one side. Folding it is like origami and I don't like the fact that the quick release plate has to be detached for storing in the bag, but other than that it's a great travel tripod. It even has a video head, albeit for lighter cameras. The only advantage the Aero 2 had was that you could detach two of the legs and use it as a monopod, but at the time I never used it like that. Thanks to its compact dimension, the B3 is with me every time I go on a shoot to mount the second camera when I'm getting a shot from the back in the cockpit. The tripod needs to be in the car, or at least part of it needs to be in the car, so the smaller the better. Meanwhile, as working with the lie bag became increasingly difficult, I decided to look for something bigger. I was looking for something that could take a big load with some reserve, and, you know, just in case I get a bigger camera, I have to attach more gear to it. And this is how I ended up with the MVT535AQ. The store selling it had some ridiculous discount on it, so I ended up with a behemoth of a tripod and a head. But this time, it's going to last me a very long time. And I love that I can adjust the drag and tilt, and I can attach things to the head, not just to the camera cage. I'm sure there are lighter tripods and better heads out there, but then we're looking at sums of at least a thousand euro or more. I'd love to get one of those Zachtler tripods where you have a single clamp per leg. This makes adjusting height very easy, but I'll have to wait with that one for clouds to clear. Ever since Anna started going with me to some of the car launch events uh, as a camera person, we started experimenting with a monopod. It's light and portable, and in some situations it can sort of kind of imitate a slider or a gimbal. But that's a topic for a separate video, which, by the way, is in the making. These days I use the monopod head on my slider to add a bit more motion to my shots, and the monopod is long, so with a 360 camera on top I can get drone-like footage in places where flying would be dangerous. To sum up, there is no one and only tripod for all occasions. If you want only one tripod, you'll have to decide where and how you'll be using it most often. The heavier the camera and the more you want to pan and tilt, the better the head you'll need, and usually the bigger and more stable tripod. If you want to buy one of the tripods I talked about in this video, there are links to all of them in the description below. These are affiliated links. If you use these links, I will get a small commission at no extra cost to you. Subscribe to Marek's Gear. Press the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Do you have your favorite tripod or tripods? In which scenarios do they work? And do you have some adventures with tripods? Let me know in the comment section below. If you have questions regarding my gear or you want to see how I use it to film my car reviews on a shoestring budget, drop me a line. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.